in an event that breeds champions. A special kind of competitor is required for a special kind of challenge. Performing time after time, keeping calm under pressure. Where split-second decisions mean success or failure. Riding on a knife edge at 30 knots. This is the Extreme Sailing Series. Oman hosts Act 1 of the 2013 Extreme Sailing Series. For four days, these waters will come alive with eight Extreme 40s, some of the world's fastest sailboats competing in a tight stadium arena. With closing speeds of 60 knots, the boats race inches from each other, just metres from the crowds. But for one team coming here to compete, there's extra pressure to perform, even before the first race has begun. Omani team, the Wave Muscat, dominated the previous season, winning four of the seven events. They went on to be crowned series champions, their skipper, Great Britain's Lee McMillan. It's gonna be extremely tough, potentially a stronger lineup this year uh, than last year, and. Uh, the, the beginning of the season nerves are there through the whole fleet and we're just hoping to get off to a reasonable start, not make too many uh, major mistakes. Avoiding mistakes is easier said than done on a racing circuit this intense. With eight 40-foot catamarans racing side by side at high speed, accidents do happen. Oh, enough room, no, they crash! That was a big smash. This is the wave muscat, they're over. The crews are clinging on, oh, crash, the master's gone. Oh. They're going to lose it. Aberdeen Asset Management, John Pink, they've lost it. Look at the crew clinging on there. For one newcomer joining the wave, this will be the greatest challenge of his life. Musab is 25. His family have been fishing the waters here for generations. A career he was set to take on until discovering the nation's emerging sail training program. All my life I've been fishing. Suddenly you just see little boats over there in the Marina Bandaroba. And I ask them, can we join you guys or can we try that? I say, yeah, you can try, but you can't work because uh, not chance now. But persistence was key to his new opportunity. He got the chance to join. Absolutely no experience about sailing, but yeah, I have experience about the wind and that sort of things, waves, where they come from and how. Applying his instinctive knowledge of the seas, Musab has now become a rising star in the development program. Oh yeah. This is nice fish. Uh, it's called grabber fish. This is very expensive fish now, especially now this season because it's very hard to catch. But yeah, there we are, we get it. This week, his life is about to change. The months of hard training are over, now he must perform, and his skipper has every faith in his new signing. It's a new challenge for us, you know, changing the team when you change you know, a good formula, a winning formula from last year, it's gonna present some new challenges, but straight away, he's, he's shown us uh, his strengths and his talent that it's you know, absolutely clear and uh, you know, we're feeling very good about the team this year and um, looking forward to uh, improving and, and being one of the strong teams. The sailors they will face consist of some of the best in the world. Most of them have sailed for a lifetime. Musab has never raced these boats before. We have to 
to accept that no pain, no gain, you know? It's a hard job. He's not about to let his team down. Lee wants to achieve what he achieved last year. I will do everything I can to make that happen. As a newcomer, the caliber of the competition is intimidating. He'll face Olympic stars and world champions and winners of sailing's most famous trophy, the America's Cup. This is the opening round of the seventh season of the Extreme Sailing Series. This year, there are eight acts, which will see the fleet race across the globe, with two stops in the Far East, four in Europe, and the finale at the next Olympic venue, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Here in Oman, racing begins outside the stadium, one day of larger open courses, preparing the crews for the three-day stadium event. In excellent race conditions, the fleet spring into action in a building 17-knot breeze. Well, hot sunshine, big breeze, what a start to the season. The waves start the series where they left off in 2012, right at the front of the fleet. And that's the third win of the day for the Wave Muscat. The defending champions arrive here on home waters off the back of a fantastic winning streak, but that was last year. This year, there are new kids on the block with the desire and talent to overthrow the incumbents. Three crews are brand new to the tour. Real team, Swiss multi-hull lake sailing champions, led by Jerome Clerk. Team Korea, fresh from the America's Cup World Series, led by the youngest skipper on the tour, 22-year-old Peter Burling. Returning for their third year, GAC Pindar have an all-new, all-Kiwi crew. Their focus, youth talent leading the youngest team on the tour, 24-year-old match racing star, Will Tiller. At every event, there's an invitational team. Here in Oman, it's Team Duckham, skippered by the first ever champion on the tour, Robert Greenhouse. I haven't sailed in extremes, or haven't done the circuit since uh, 2008, so five years ago. He was a winner, but now it's a different game. Over the last five years, the, uh, the circuit has evolved. Um, teams are getting more and more competitive, racing is getting tighter and tighter. For sure it's, uh, you know, it's, it's anyone's race. Almost 30 races are planned for the next three days. Maybe one of the new faces can cause an upset as the stadium racing gets underway. Final seconds to the start. Eight, seven, teams head six, towards the line, including Wave Muscat, Lee McMillan. Go, 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 We're on board with GAC Pinder, the youngest crew, but they've not had a good start. It's a great start for the red and black sails of Alinghi. Team Career have a good start. So the wave must go out there as well. It's a very short opening leg. And Team Career, brand new to the circuit this year. Are they leading the charge? Alinghi with the red and black sails. They're round the first mark. Big Jenikas are about to pop out. Bang, there they go. Left to pitcher, Switzerland Alinghi going to the right-hand side of the course. The Wave Muscat, Korea are heading towards us. Well, two options to head downwind. SAP Extreme Sailing are looking good on the far side of the course, but there's two marks. You can go around either, just 200 meters down to the bottom of the course. And Korea, the brand new teams, far right of pitcher, are rounding in first position. Staying out of trouble and in clear air is key. The newcomers are starting to enjoy themselves. Team Korea are really getting into their stride. But the experienced heads of the Wave Muscat, Red Bull Sailing Team and Alinghi are not far behind. There's been a lot of talk about Team Korea on the dockside, just how good they could be and in their first stadium race, they've gone out and won. This crew are no strangers to success. A mixture of extreme 40 veterans and up-and-coming talent.
Kiwi Peter Burling and tactician Blair Tuke have been friends for years. Together they won silver at London 2012 in the 49er class. This is Peter Burling, this is Blair Tuke, and this at the moment is the fastest boat as they head down went to the mark and look they're just overhauling boats on their way down. The Games was one of the hardest challenges of their lives. Changing codes to the extreme 40 will be another. We've been sailing together for the last four years in the 49er and um, they're just kind of been building with the, the goal of a, a medal in, in London and they kind of worked pretty hard towards that and managed to get some pretty good results along the way and had a fair bit of fun. Mm. The 49ers compared to other sailing is really fast and really a lot of races but um, you know this is a step further again and this is I guess is short racing and as intense as you can get so it's um, a lot of boat on boat situations and a lot it is different than what we used to, but having had that 49er background, we're sort of trying to adapt to it. But adapting in this intense, hostile environment is never easy. We've been kind of trying to learn as much as we can all week, and you start off quite far behind, and been kind of learning how long these boats take to accelerate and where we can put them and where you can get away with certain manoeuvres and where you can't. And I think that's the things that the guys that have been in the, the circuit for a bit longer have got over us at the moment. Going head to head with the proven winners of this tour, the Kiwi duo know they must learn fast to succeed. Guys like Red Bull, The Wave and um, Alinghi, they've done a lot of sailing together and they know the Extreme 40 style of racing. When different situations arise, they sort of know what, what to do and um, it's just where we're struggling a little bit now. You know, that's the difference between literally first and last in, the, in this style of racing. Yeah, I think with a few more kind of races under our belt, we should be able to push a bit harder for the lead. Last year, a brand new team won the first event. Can Team Korea cause a similar surprise in 2013? The Extreme Sailing Series sees some of the world's best sailors compete in an eight-round global tour. Eight teams are in Oman, where the local team and defending champions are out to keep last year's winning momentum going. But at the halfway stage of the event, they're not having it their own way. Four, three, two, one. That is the start. OCS GAC Pinder, so the young Kiwi team were punching hard, but too hard. They're going to have to turn back. First boat to get the Jenica out is the Wave Muscat. Lee McMillan's Wave Muscat, the only boat to be flying the Jenica. Can they lay that mark? It's a good start, but the Wave Muscat have got the Jenica out, but that angle, I think, may be too tight for them. I think they may be better if the Jenica comes down. But it's a Lingi on the inside if they've got an overlap. Red Bull sailing, squeeze round, and Lingia controlling them on the inside. Two teams from the middle of Europe are controlling. Remember the course, it's down to the gate now. And Red Bull are on the outside, and they kept their momentum going as they rounded the mark. Lingi stopped for a second, but they are going to jibe early. Red Bull, well they've left it late to jive and Alinghi I think are going quicker now. There is more breeze in the middle of the race course. They're coming down towards the white marks. And that's Alinghi coming into picture and rounding the right hand side. Interesting they were going the left hand side of the race course the first time. As the wind continues to drop, the tension only increases. Alinghi and Red Bull approach the mark together, but it's the Swiss who have the right of way, forcing the Austrians into a tight situation. Ernesto Bertarelli, though, is coming in with more speed. He's got right of way, wind coming from the right of the sails. So he says, starboard, keep clear to Red Bull. Red Bull have to tack. Beautiful execution there by Ernesto Bertarelli and Alinghi. And as they tack, they get their Jenica up. That was super sailing by Alinghi. And 
Malingi are about to complete a very, very good day. They have delivered the performance of the first day of stadium racing for 2013. It's a useful second place for Red Bull. But a fifth for the wave leaves the defending champions looking a little phased. So experience leads the fleet as Red Bull close out the second day on top, with the Wave Muscat in second on equal points. Swiss team Alingia third, a great start to the week for them. A well-established name on this tour, Red Bull sailing team had a disappointing year in 2012, missing wins by the narrowest of margins. That is an agonising moment. Their season is falling apart in front of them. That's a cruel blow. They are in a podium position for sure. Their skipper, double Olympic gold medalist, Roman Hagara. We had our chances last year. We started always quite good in the events, but uh, then we had like always one day which was like a nightmare for us. Their goal this year, capitalize on their strong starts and win their first ever event. The most important uh, race will be the, the last race, which is double points. And if you're still in there and fighting for the top spot, that would, would be the perfect scenario. Just behind Red Bull, Switzerland's Alinghi. New tactician Morgan Larsen seems to be fitting in well. In 2012, Larsen was skipper of Oman Air. They won this event and finished series runner-up. Morgan Larsen is about to make history in this series. We've never seen a new skipper walk into this fleet of world champions and walk away with victory at his first attempt. The Swiss team will be looking to capitalise on his race-winning qualities. The team's clicking well, we're sailing the boat well, it's a well-prepared team. The four of the guys on board have sailed together for a long time, so uh, it was sort of a smooth transition to include me. And I'm just trying to find my, uh, my way on the boat without screwing them up too bad, and, and so far so good. At the midpoint here in Oman, the competition is still wide open. Couldn't be closer at the top of the table. The Austrian team, Red Bull sailing, and this one, the Wave Muscat. Final seconds of the start. That is the start. Can McMillan find a way to overhaul Red Bull? First mark, Lee McMillan, the Wave Muscat, are leading. Coming up a bit here, guys. McMillan, former British Olympic sailor, sounding very calm. Yeah, they're going to go straight. They're slow behind. Slow behind. He's liking the look of where he is on the oh, racetrack. Kite sheets, please. Get that kite out of the water. But he's not liking that. Get that kite, get that Jenica out of the water, which they do. Rounding the top mark. Well, it's a good start. McMillan is heading down towards the finish. Thank you to the crowd, a smile on the face. It's a win for Lee McMillan. A good start for the wave, but the Austrians immediately counter in race 15. Well, Red Bull sailing have responded well. Skipper, double Olympic gold medalist, Roman Hagara, Jenica flapping, but they've got a lead of around 50 metres. Bounce back after that poor first race today. Well, once they got ahead, They've extended. This is their first race win of the day. Alinghi seem to be the only team able to keep up with the initial pace. Well, Red Bull sailing may be the team of the day, but Alinghi aren't far behind. Another podium place for Bertarelli. But the Red Bull crew continued to extend their lead over the rest of the fleet. Well, this is another win for Roman Hagar and Red Bull Sailing. They're having a great day. After their initial win, defending champions, the Wave, struggle to get a look in. But it was all about Red Bull, who after seven races, recorded four wins and three seconds. In the end, it was a day of total domination. With just one day remaining, Red Bull extend their lead to 15 points. The Wave and Alinghi have a lot of work to do. Catching the Austrians will be a huge ask.
Red Bull have done the hard work. Can they finally put their demons to bed and score their first ever victory on the tour? It's the morning of the final day and the two leading teams are under pressure. Red Bull had an exceptional day yesterday, just, uh, you know, sailed incredibly well. We have been in this position before, you know, we've normally got a bit of a task on our hands. Um, I'd say today's is quite a big one. <laughs> 15 points to Red Bulls are going to be a big challenge. Although it's our home turf, we'd love to win here. We've got to be realistic and uh, you can't win them all. Red Bull will be looking to avoid the same old mistakes. Well, we learned a lot of lessons last year. I think we're one step ahead of where we were and possibly one step ahead of the opposition as well this week. Anything can change. Um, we've lost 15 points before in the past. I'm not going to hedge our bets just now, see how the day goes and take it race by race. Almost immediately, things are not looking good for Red Bull. That's a disappointing race for Red Bull, but they've got a big lead. One race like that doesn't matter. Well, the Wave Muscat, just everything is going right for them today. Another win. Oh, that's another really poor result for Red Bull sailing. Well, Hagara's face just says it all. A 15-point advantage when he started the day. He's now in second, chasing the Wave Muscat. With points drawn level, the final race will now decide the winner. may not be fast, but there's plenty of tension out here. That is the start. It's a direct head-to-head -head between the Wave Musker, there is Lee McMillan and Red Bull Sailing. It's who beats who in this race will win the first event. Small trim, Ed, small trim, please. And a bit more. Well, there is a race on here, but there's only one battle that really matters. Austria versus Oman. I'm going to lose distance on an Esso though. I'm going to lose Red Bull tack, tack leaving a lingi between the wave and the turning mark. The Omani boat could be trapped. It's too much distance lost. We'll give away the advantage. Well, McMillan with the two tone blue sails can't turn for the mark because a lingi is blocking him. So a lingi tack, and now McMillan tacks, but where are Red Bull? Coming from the right-hand side, Red Bull, have they got the advantage? Red Bull reached the mark first, but are simply not moving. The Wave Muscat are going to slide straight past the Austrian team. And if it stays like this, the home teams will be champions in Amman. But the Austrians aren't done yet. Option of two marks, they're not going to follow the Wave Muscat around the mark. This is Red Bull Sailing's last chance. Nice and Final mark. Oh, look at that, that's the gain line between the Wave Muscat and Red Bull, just says two metres between the boats. The Wave Muscat have got right of way. I think McMillan's done it. I think he's done it. The home team round ahead of Red Bull sailing. It, I can't believe it. 15 points, the advantage going into today. But the Wave Muscat, well, that says it all. Woo! Lee McMillan really did have an uphill struggle. The Wave <laughs> Muscat are champions here in Amman. Well done, boys. Well done, boys. Well done, <laughs> We've had some good comebacks on the last day, but I really didn't think we were going to be able to pull that one off. You know, Red Bull yesterday were just sensational, and uh, today we had our day. Um, we had some really good races, and we just really had the bit between the team. A good fight it doesn't get any better than that when you come out on top. It's the best feeling. But disappointment for Red Bull once again, letting such a convincing lead slip away. For the Wave Muscat and their new crew member, Musab Al Hadi, it's the perfect start to his professional sailing career. Ernesto Bertarelli 
the man who led the first European team to an America's Cup victory, secures his first podium place as skipper. None of the brand new teams on the podium this time, but all had their moments in Oman. The Extreme Sailing Series now heads east to round two in Singapore. See you there. <laughs>